What's good y'all? Just coming to y'all with another video. As y'all can tell, I had to upgrade the camera equipment one time. Now we in full HD. Look at all sorts of flesh. Now nah, I'm just joking, but we're gonna get right into this video. So the title of this video is five MCAT tips you may not know. Now, when you watch other MCAT tip videos on YouTube, um, a lot of times you're going to see people say to stay focused, make a schedule, do practice questions, take practice tests. And these are all extremely, extremely important. However, uh, I'm gonna try to put my own little spin on it. Um, I'm gonna try to give some tips, some alter alternative tips that really helped me for the last time that I took this test. So with no further ado, we're gonna get right into this. The first tip that I would say is to definitely be a part of the Reddit MCAT sub forum. And if you do not know what Reddit is or if you don't use the MCAT Reddit sub forum, I'm going to leave a link in the description for you to check it out. And to me, this is the hands down most helpful website for prospective students trying to take this MCAT. The thing is, um, you're, there's a lot of people in this community who have, who are either in the process of taking it, who have already taken it. There, um, a lot of different people are giving so much good advice, um, little tidbits here and there on what they can do to help with the MCAT. Um, even when it comes to practice tests, um, the AMC practice tests and stuff like that, you'll see people post it and you'll see people give descriptive answers on how that, on how they got the correct answer and you know the justification behind so this is something I feel everybody should at least check out once um, in fact like if you don't watch any more of this video you can just turn it off right now but I think that this is such an important tip and you know something that everybody should at least check out once so reddit MCAT check it out the second tip that I would give is to purchase every resource on the AMC website and here's why I say this a lot now granted a lot of people do end up purchasing the two practice tests that AMC have however the thing is there's also section banks there's also question banks there's also flashcards everything that AMC has you definitely need to use it and you definitely need to do problems because the thing is it's like even though with test companies like um, Kaplan and Princeton and uh, exam crackers they all have very good resources for their, you know, for their test prep companies, but nothing compares to the real thing. And you'll even start to notice that just due to the way that AMC asks questions, it's a little bit different from Kaplan and um, Exam Crackers and all the rest of the test prep, test prep companies. So what am I getting at all here? The thing is, it's just like you need as much exposure to AAMC style questions as possible, um, especially with the section bank, because I feel like that is very, um, that's very representative of the type of questions that you will see on the MCAT. So that would definitely be tip number two, to purchase everything, work all those problems, and for the ones that you don't get, go on to Reddit, because somebody probably didn't get it before you did, and they can give you a descriptive answer on that. That would be number two. The third thing that I would say is to download Anki or Quizlet these are flashcard apps and not only to have it on your laptop a lot of people have it on the laptop but the main thing is to put it on your phones now why do I say this because the thing is it's like a lot of now certain people do have like a whole summer a lot of people take out a whole summer in order to take this exam however some people do not have this luxury some people are taking it while in school some people are taking it while working a job so there's other obligations that you have so you can't just pull out your laptop every single time. Maybe you're at work or class or something like that. You got a little bit of time to spare. Oh, but you do have your phone. You always have your phone on you. So you just pull up that app and you just go through um, vocabulary words, go through definitions that you wrote down. It's very helpful because as you know, the more times you see something, the more likely it'll stick in your head. And this is something that helped me out so much. I had a full-time job. So whenever I was on my lunch break, I would be on that Anki app just going through as many vocabulary words as I possibly could. Now, the official uh, the official Anki app, I think for iPhone is if I'm not mistaken, I think it's $20, which you know, it's pretty expensive especially for app stores, but 
if you think about it, that's like two fast food trips, you know. So if you just don't go to fast food two times, boom, you got your Anki app. Or they do have like this unofficial app that you could use that's free. So if you're cheap like me, then that's another option that you can look into as well. So I would definitely say that would be tip number three. Now the fourth tip, um, this fourth tip is gonna be like 4A and 4B. And this is mainly for the car section where a lot of people seem to struggle. And I struggled a lot with this one as well. Um, you know, this wasn't my highest scoring one. However, I did improve three points from the last time I took it. Now, the thing with cars, especially when you look at some of these passages, they're absolutely ridiculous. Like, they're over here talking about Picasso. Um, they'll have some topics on, like, 15th century politics. Like, just stuff that most people do not really care about. And so it's hard to read. So the thing is, you have to find a way to structure it to, to where you can understand everything in a good amount of time. So the first part of the tip I'll say for cars is to make sure that you're doing every single passage within 10 minutes. You got to give yourself 10 minutes. There's, I think, nine passages. I think they give you 90 minutes. So 10 minutes here or there. Maybe you can go a little bit under, a little over, but you want to try to you know, put a timer in the back of your head, like, okay, I got 10 minutes for this section. And a big thing that helped me is highlighting. Now, if you've ever taken the Kaplan course, the Kaplan course is going to tell you to, after you read the paragraph, write um, a little bit of a summary down and stuff like that, which is pretty helpful, at least, but the thing for me is like, due to the time constraints, I didn't have time just to sit there and write everything down. So what you can do in order to help save time, which is what I did, is like highlight the important things, things that stand out, maybe certain words that the author used. Just highlight, highlight, highlight. And the crazy part about it is like, you don't, it's not necessarily that you're gonna really go back and read the things that you highlighted, but you just highlighting it there, it like leaves like a mental note in your head. And so if you need to refer back to, to like a question to ask, you'll know exactly where to go. You're like, oh, okay, um, the author used that type of tone in this paragraph, because I remember I highlighted it. So, um, that would pretty much be my tip for cars. Um, you know, but the thing is, uh, there's some other people actually, I can leave a link on this video. There's actually a lady, she said she got a 130 on cars. That's ridiculous, that's crazy. But, and you know, she probably went into more detail on stuff that she did. So I can leave a link under this video so y'all can see her video. You know, I'll give her a little bit of a shout out. Um, and I think the last tip, the last tip, especially one that helped me so much, <clears throat> you know, we're going to call it LeBron mode, AKA ghost mode, but I want to use LeBron mode for this situation. Now, the thing is, if you, you, everybody knows who LeBron James is, but maybe you don't know, like, you know, it's playoff times. Whenever it starts the playoff times, what LeBron James does is he exits off all social media, all social media. You can't find him on social media. He's not on Instagram. He's not doing this thing on Snapchat. No, he's off everything. And I think the reason for this is, you know, so he can be fully, fully focused in what he's trying to do. And the thing is, I feel like everybody should at least take a portion. So let's say maybe you have two months to study for your MCAT. You should maybe take those last three weeks and go into full LeBron mode. Full LeBron mode. Just exit off all your social media. You know what I mean? Don't, you know, get off of Facebook, get off of all that because this is this is a crunch time. This is time that you need to really sit there and focus and put in all your effort towards this MCAT. This is something what I did, except I took it to an extreme level because I had a full-time job. Um, I didn't really have eight hours a day that I could study. Um, eight to five, took me an hour commute. I get home around seven. So all I really had was from seven to 11 or 12 to study. Now, the thing is, if I got home and I decided to surf Facebook for two hours, okay, now it's nine or 10 o'clock. Now that's only hour two. So me canceling off all social media for a couple of months was so helpful for me. It allowed me to really focus on the MCAT and it allowed me to not get distracted because social media can be so distracting. Like, you know, sometimes, you know, you're looking at who Kylie Jenner is dating, um, you know, you're trying to see what Donald Trump said, you know, his latest tweets or whatnot. So it, it, it can really just distract you from what you're trying to do. 
And from a doctor, um, because I actually went and talked to a doctor, you know, kind of like for some help, for some MCAT help. And he told me one of the most important things I'll never forget is he said, listen, he was like, social media is always going to be there. Your friends are always going to be there. Women are always going to be there. But this MCAT is something you got to take care of now. And that just resonated with me. It's like, I know, you know, sometimes we're just so caught in with the social media, but, you know, just take in like maybe, you know, maybe a month and just really focus on the test. I will feel would do wonders in helping you focus and helping you really put in that effort to get the score that you want for your MCAT. So that's pretty much um, my five tips. Um, I don't, obviously I did not touch everything. Maybe there's some other tips, but yeah, definitely leave a comment. If you feel uh, there's some other tips I missed or you have any other questions. And like always, man, definitely like and subscribe. Um, we're going to come up with some more videos. As you can see, the quality is on point now. Um, you know, I made an investment. I'm really going to try to do this YouTube thing. So show your boy some love. Um, all right, y'all, man. Y'all take it easy.